So my today's presentation uh, uh, would relate to the health and sustainability in the context of environment and health uh, issues. I'm coming from the WHO European Office uh, and the WHO European Office for Environment and Health and we are located in Bonn where the Climate Health Summit is taking place uh, past uh, 10 days. So, uh, can we start with the presentation? First slide, please. Uh, what is sustainability? We should, uh, uh, in fact, I would like you to, to, to share with you some very, very old uh, uh, definition from Brundtland report uh, that uh, the sustainability, in fact, means that we meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own uh, needs. And uh, while I was um, really hardly able to, to hear the chair, I have heard that uh, he was um, mentioning the, 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 the children and the, their lives. And I was just commenting with my colleague that in fact uh, having in mind environmental impacts on health, it could happen that we will not have even the children anymore in the future. So the most comprehensive strategic framework on closing the, the gap and improving uh, everyone's health, as well as to accelerate the rate of improvement of the health of those uh, most impacted, most vulnerable, uh, and those uh, with the highest risk of inequity is uh, tackled by the, the United Nations Agenda Transforming Our World 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And it was agreed in 2015 by 17, uh, by all member states. The, all heads of the states adopted at the UN General Assembly 17 Sustainable Development Goals and it's 169 targets later on uh, uh, and uh, we our mandate is to work with the member states to make uh, uh, all these uh, uh, goals being implemented by uh, 2030 and what is new in fact in this uh, 2030 agenda and goals are first universal, meaning that they are relevant to all countries. You might be remembering that uh, millennium development uh, goals uh, were only relevant for developing countries. Now it is a firm commitment uh, that uh, all countries, all UN member states would work for this common goal then it is transformative, meaning that it is human rights based. It is also addressing governance and local dimension. It is focused very much on equity and on reaching those uh, who are uh, hardest to access. And the main motto is leave no one behind. And in, in, um, in fact, it also involves new actors for the first time, including private sector and civil society, because it is not only the governments, they uh, influence the world. And then it's a silo breaker, because it requires collaboration of different sectors. And uh, thank you very much for inviting WHO to your meeting, because by this move, in fact, we are breaking the silos. We are UN agency dealing with the health, our mandate is to serve as a science policy interface and uh, the work with academia is extremely important for us. At the slide number, number uh, uh, five, uh, health and well-being are presented around the goal three. The goal, SDG goal three is, re is related to health. It has nine targets and uh, Health and well-being are an outcome, a determinant, and an enabler of all the goals. And in fact, never before has health and well-being for all at all ages placed uh, 
at the center of global uh, um, agenda. You know, in, um, in, in the approaches applied uh, on uh, Rio Summit and beyond, on Brundtland Commission before that, uh, it was in fact uh, mainly addressing to three pillars of society, three types of activities, uh, uh, social, economic, uh, uh, and environmental. Uh, this is of course important and uh, it is uh, taken over, but uh, a much more, more comprehensive and inclusive approach is uh, applied, including really, really health uh, and showing uh, that, that uh, the world is committed to, to ensure that uh, all human beings can fulfill their full potential in dignity and equality and uh, in a healthy environment. Uh, in fact, uh, what needs to be done? What does that mean? What exactly needs to be done and how this positioning of the health is, uh, is uh, uh, reflecting all what is uh, performed in other sectors, including, uh, uh, including education. Uh, having in mind that uh, because we, we, without the healthy people, healthy, healthy children and healthy populations, uh, uh, also the progress in education cannot be made. Uh, it is also very much linked with the status of the environment. And we have made a good uh, progress in many areas related to the health, like um, in life expectancy as one of the important uh, uh, indicators. Uh, women health, children health, adolescent health, uh, prevention and control of communicable and non-communicable diseases, but this progress needs to be sustained and, uh, and uh, strengthened. Uh, however, the pace of change is slow in some areas. Uh, for example, sexual and reproductive health, mental health, disabilities, violence, injuries, just to mention a few, I am reflecting to the situation in WHO uh, uh, European region. Uh, so uh, we have to finish the unfinished businesses on Millennium Development Goals. Let me inform you that the WHO European region is the only region which did not achieve Millennium Development Goal on sanitation. And yes, you, you hear well. So we still face with a very, very classical challenges. And we have uh, uh, nowadays still schools, uh, children, all types of children, caring facilities, including schools and hospitals, healthcare facilities, without access, any access to water, sanitation, and electricity. So which progress then we are talking about, for example, in education and, and health, if we have such a situation. We have such a few commitments from before, uh, past the decades, from the ministries in charge of that uh, environment and health, but uh, the progress is uh, not yet there. Meanwhile, we continue to face many global challenges like antimicrobial resistance, large-scale migration, changing climate, civil unrest, emergencies uh, that we have to tackle, and of course uh, the children, young people, the students are most exposed to that uh, and uh, uh, it happens quite often that uh, they, cannot, uh, they cannot in fact fully fully enroll and uh, have an appropriate uh, education. Not to mention gender equity and human rights. Uh, they are not always mainstream throughout uh, all, uh, all actions. Uh, I would also like to say something about the public health interventions that are applied uh, across the society. Pub public health uh, is according to Reiner and Lang definition from 2012 is public health is wrapped around the reality of change. And what does that mean? Society cannot uh, no longer um, hope to deliver health and well-being. 
and healthcare and the uh, equity aspect while addressing them without uh, a, a radical rethink. And a part of this must be environmental uh, conceptualization of the whole public health project. I gave one very classical, very simple example on water and sanitation, but there are many of such examples. So the only logical conceptualization of public health is going forward the uh, environmental conceptualization. A uh, relationship between uh, environment, meaning environment in which we are, we are born, the environment in which we live, environment in which we perform our activities, going to school or work. Uh, uh, health and well-being ma must embrace a distal, distal dimensions of health determinants and address the diseases in its root causes. And if we don't do that, if we don't address diseases in root causes, then all our, our talk about the sustainability, uh, in fact, uh, will not uh, manage to, 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 to be enacted into an appropriate uh, actions. Uh, and um, in fact, uh, I would like to say a few words, how do we address uh, uh, all these issues uh, in our center. We are supporting member states of the WHO European region in implementing uh, all these activities uh, and uh, in the process which is called European Environment and Health Process, uh, which consists of the joint work of both sectors, health and environment. We had many commitments in the ministerial declarations also dealing with the, the most vulnerable, including children, uh, commitments on the places where children work and play. We have a very uh, a special uh, partnership with youth NGOs, uh, especially on, uh, on dealing with water and sanitation in, in, uh, in schools. So you see, we are really, really tackling the basic digital determinants of health in, in uh, our work. Out of this, uh, the, 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 the most significant environmental factor which is affecting our population of, two, of nine, uh, 912,000 uh, million uh, inhabitants in WHO European region is the air quality or influence of polluted air on human health. Uh, maybe it would be interesting for you to, to, to learn that each year 1.4 million people die in our region, in Europe, due to polluted environment. That 25% of, of uh, ischemic heart diseases that are occurred, occurring in our region are uh, due to polluted air, especially with small particles. I have already mentioned the, the way we are addressing these issues and uh, uh, I would mention Ostrava declaration which is the last ministerial declaration uh, adopted this year in June in Ostrava which has uh, uh, six priority areas for action recognized by both by the ministers of health and the ministers of uh, environment and these are air pollution, water sanitation and hygiene, chemicals, waste and contaminated sites, climate change, cities, urbanization and environmentally sustainable health systems. So in order to, to make uh, these promises making some effect, uh, it is extremely important uh, that uh, we define policy action areas uh, uh, to increase equity in, in, uh, in health and I would like to point out to some influencing uh, uh, factors like uh, in addition to the quality of living and working environment, this is also a personal and community capabilities and community resilience, overall community resilience employment and uh, working conditions and uh, uh, social protection. Uh, which are the four main enablers for sustainable development goals implementation? Uh, in fact, um, 
the first and the most uh, important is investment for health. Investment for health, which is not only investing in health systems, but it's also investing in healthy schools, healthy hospitals, uh, healthy living and working environment. This is investment in health. Not to use coal and wood in the in the wood or the coal stove in in some room, uh, and uh, to pollute the air uh, where the children are learning. Not to have the facilities without the access of safe water and sanitation. So all these investments are investments for health. Not only investments in in um, in the brand new hospitals and medicines. Second enabler is a multi-partner cooperation, which aims coherent policies, and I have mentioned a few examples, shared accountability, and exchange of information and experiences. And uh, I would say this is what we are exactly doing now. Also, uh, we agreed to join uh, forces uh, in our region with the regional UN agencies, and we work together with them. And uh, we identify, in fact, uh, uh, these uh, uh, four priority areas, health through the life course, starting from the children, which are the most vulnerable, communicable diseases, universal health coverage, and migration. And uh, let me come then to the third unable, enabler is innovation, global interconnectivity, and social mobility. It is extremely important for health and well-being, but it is also important uh, um, for uh, the development of all other actions. Uh, I would say only a few words also about the, the region-wide Health 2020 policy framework, uh, which is the basis of the actions at the country level, especially for the ministries of health, which is calling for the involvement of all other sector. And I would uh, uh, come to an end of my presentation by sharing with you some, uh, some data why investments in health are at the same time the investments in well-being. 